Hey guys, Sam here at NA Studios. Today I want to show you my mix bus chain, mastering chain, whatever you want to call it, and this is using just Slate Digital plugins. Now I've been an All Access Pass subscriber for, I don't know, a few years now, and I've made up this chain which kind of works for, for most tracks. It's going to change a little bit as I move along and from one track to another, but these plugins are going to remain. And I'm going to show you why I love using just Slate Digital plugins on my mix bus. Let's check it out. Okay, so my processing plugins are all Slate Digital. There are a couple that I use that are kind of utility things, Sonarworks and a reference plugin. I'm going to ignore those because they're not actually changing the sound of the mix when it goes out. But there are a few that I like to use purely from Slate Digital and I get the sound that I love just from these plugins. Those plugins are Virtual Tape Machine, first and foremost, that goes first in the chain. Then after that, I've got Virtual Mix Rack doing some lovely stuff here. Then after that, I've got an Infinity EQ, which is doing a little lift, a little cut. And then after that, I've got FGX, which is my final plugin. Let's take a listen to this mix before the plugins are engaged and then with them engaged, and you're going to hear the difference. Let's check it out. Okay, so first off, I want to say this is a track called Parable Man from a band called Kingdom Keys. It's the best song in the world. It's, I love it so much. I've been mixing it for a video that I'm going to be doing in the future. Check it out, please. It's in the description below. Parable Man by Kingdom Keys. Just, just have a listen to it and just, God, so good. I want to go into these plugins now then. So first off, I'm going to go one by one and just kind of explain what they're doing and why these are integral to my mix bus. So first off, let's go to Virtual Tape Machine. Now, if I turn this on, I'm not doing a massive amount with this. The needle is moving a fair amount, but I'm not adding too much. I like to go to normal bias, 30 inch per second, and then on the half inch two track machine. So this is kind of the mastering machine as opposed to the track by track thing that you'd probably do. I don't do that actually. I don't tend to put um, Virtual Tape Machine on every single track. Don't know why, just never have, might do in the future, we'll see what happens. But for me, this is just a mastering thing. On the um, FG9 tape, I can't remember what that is, or the FG456, can't remember. I might be using the complete wrong one for mastering, but sue me, whatever. Let's take a listen to how it sounds without, and then let's bring it in. just adds this three-dimensionality. Is that a word? I don't know. But it just adds this kind of surrounding sound to it and it just brings it all together. It's like, it's that classic thing they say about like analog gear and tape machines. It just kind of hugs the sound. And that's exactly what this does. It's got a real nice boost in the low end. And that is particularly what I like about this. It really emphasizes that low end and just the weight of the actual track. And that's mainly what I'm using this for. It's the overall weight, the kind of chunkiness of the track, and it just glues it all together. So that goes first in my chain, virtual tape machines. I love it for just bringing the whole track together. After that, I've got virtual mix rack. Now, virtual mix rack for mastering, it, I don't know, it doesn't really go, but it just kind of works for me. Um, I've got another video on how we can master using just virtual mix rack. You can check it out above. But this for me, it's just the kind of saturation element, a little bit more than the tape machine is. Now, I've got two trimmer plugins here. I've got one at the beginning and one at the end. That's just me. That's trying to match the level coming in and then going out. And also it means that I'm not going to be absolutely crushing and saturating too much. Because as you'll notice, I've got the virtual mix bus, the uh, the actual bus one as opposed to the channel one. And then I've got uh, New York in the virtual tube collection and then Bomber. Now Bomber is just amazing. It's a plugin all on its own, but it's fantastic. What I'm going to do is bring this um, this chain in and just take out all of them and then bring them in one by one. Now, Virtual Mix Bus is doing, it's doing something. It's doing a small amount, though. I've got this on the Brit 4KE, so like the SSL style thing. Um, and critically, I've got it on Group 1. So everything that I've got in my mix is in Group 1. And it just means that I can bring the input up or bring it down accordingly for the, for the whole thing. Um, for this, it's just at 12 o'clock, and it's just kind of working. 
But anyway, let's take a listen. First off, you're going to hear it without anything, and then with the uh, mix bus, and then I'm going to move along and bring them all in. Let's check it out. So this, again, to me, is kind of an element of glue. It's bringing the whole thing together. I don't want to crush it too much. I'm going to be compressing afterwards in FGX, but I just like to have that element of saturation. It just kind of brings the whole thing up. And for me, really, when I'm doing my mix bus stuff, I don't want to crush it too much. I just want to bring everything together. Now, what I will say is that this mix bus or master bus, whatever you want to call it, this is what I'm going to be putting on if I'm mastering myself or if I'm just sending it out directly from Logic. If I'm taking this to a mastering engineer afterwards, I'm not going to be putting this on. I'm not going to be putting everything on here because this is going to be altering the dynamics and they may want to do that themselves. They probably will. So this is if I'm just doing it myself. But a couple of points I want to make here. On the uh, New York the Virtual Tube Collection, I've got it on console instead of preamp. Preamp to me is far more like squashy, crushy, um, which is not quite what I want. I've not got push and I've got saturation only up to just below three. So I'm not actually saturating that much. But Bomber, this is the, the critical one. If we take a look at what's happening with Bomber, I'm going up to where about the bomb is and then kind of bringing it in. Let's bring that intensity all the way down and then let's just hear it as we bring that up. It's just brilliant. It just so many of these Slate Digital plugins, especially the saturation ones and the kind of dynamics magic with Bomber, you can't really explain what they're doing. It's just a case of you turn it on and it just sounds brilliant. And it's not as if we're like compressing loads or you can't really say, right, it's adding 2 dB at 4K or whatever. It's not that it's doing that. It's just improving the sound loads through that saturation. And that is what I love so much about these Slate Digital plugins where they're not compressors, they're not EQs, they're not anything specific. They're just like tone boxes and they just sound great. So in that one, I'm not actually coming right up to the bomb, but whatever, it sounds great to me. I'm sure if I brought it up to the bomb, it would sound great as well. But for now, that's what sounds good for me. So as I said, the trim up, the input and output, I'm just bringing it down a touch on the input and then back up again. So I'm kind of level matching so that I'm not being swayed by turning it on, turn it off again. Oh, it's louder. Sounds great. None of that. Next up then is the Infinity EQ. Now I'm kind of using it in a bit of a boring way here because I'm just uh, taking a low cut at, what is that, 20, uh, 22 hertz, just taking out some of the super low end, adding some low end on a shelf at 80 hertz, and then adding some high end on a shelf at 3.5K. Now you can do so much with this EQ, and as I said, different tracks will get different processing, but for this one, I kind of feel like it's okay to be boring because it was recorded really well, hopefully the mix sounds all right, and at that mix burst mastering stage, I don't need to do too much. But regardless, let's hear it without and then with, and we're just going to hear some solidifying and some top end sparkle. So to me, it's just kind of affecting the vocal and the guitars a touch. It's just brightening it all. The great thing about this, though, is that if I wanted to, let's say I just wanted to brighten up the just the cymbals or just the guitars, the stuff that's in the far left and right, I can do that on a mid-side basis. So I can go to the stereo cymbal there, and it's in stereo mode at the moment. So let's say we're just going to add this to the sides. And then we can do that. And let's just add this top end EQ to everything in the sides, but not the middle. So now it's not going to affect the vocal. It's just going to affect the cymbals and the guitars. So we can probably be a bit more aggressive with this. Let's take a listen. So it's not affecting the vocal there because that's pan to the center. It's just affecting the stuff that's in the outside. And we can be even more extreme with this. If we go past the little notch, we can make it so that as well as boosting in the sides, it's going to dip it in the middle as well. 
that's not actually useful for what I want to do here, but it's worth mentioning that you can do it. And you can obviously do this in just the middle as well. So let's do it just the brightening in the center and not on the outsides. Let's take it down a little bit and then bring it up. So that's just affecting the kick, snare, the vocal, everything pan just to the center and leaving the cymbals and guitars alone, which is super handy. Um, I'm just gonna put that back to stereo mode though because I'll forget otherwise and then that'll ruin everything. And finally, the pièce de résistance. This is the FGX. Now this is the one that they say is the mastering module. This is the, the final touch of everything. And it is, but to me it goes alongside all the stuff before. So I've got all that saturation, all that kind of goodness that's coming from the tape machine and from the virtual mix rack. I've got my actual bona fide EQ, adding some lows, adding some highs and whatever it is that that particular track needs. And then with FGX, I'm actually using the compressor on this as my main mix bus compressor, because it sounds great. And then I'm using loads of stuff in this FG level. In this instance, I'm not actually bringing it up on the gain because I don't really need to at this point. I, it's not a finished mix to send out, but I may do in the future. But it's kind of cool to be able to have that and uh, especially having that constant gain monitoring. So you can add that gain and hear how much is going to be squashed without actually having that lifting gain. We'll have a look at that. So uh, I'm just going to bring this in. I'm going to bring out FG level and just bring in the compressor and hear what it's doing. So I've got the ratio at 1.5 to 1, very low. Threshold at around minus 8, something like that. Slowish attack and fastish release. Let's use it without first and then take a listen to it when it's on. So it's an interesting sound. Again, it's just bringing everything together. I'm not actually using it as kind of a, a peak compressor here. You'll hear that the snare in relation to everything else, when I engage this compressor, it actually comes up a bit because that's being allowed through because of the slow attack. Take a listen again and listen to that snare. So it's kind of bringing everything down around that snare and kind of around that vocal as well. So it really is not a peak compressor here. It really is an overall hugging of the sound and it is an overall kind of squash, but a very gentle one. I'm only taking off, what, 1 dB, maybe a touch more at any time. I'm not actually compressing any peaks there. It's just an overall bringing up of the level and bringing the, the whole thing, kind of compressing it and squashing it down a bit, which is exactly what I like from a compressor on my mix bus. So last of all then i'm going into this fg level now again this is one of those where it's not a compressor it's not an eq it's kind of doing some transient stuff so we've got low punch we've got detail and dynamic perception now i'm not going to give you like the pdf manual description of what all these do i'm just going to kind of describe what they do to me um so low punch for me is about that kick and about the bass guitar and the pick of the bass guitar it's about that that low punch and that low weight the detail to me is the same thing, but in the high end. It's about the snap of the snare. It's about the vocal, the consonants, the transient response of the vocal. And then dynamic perception, to me, I think it's something to do with how it's actually um, bringing stuff up and how it's clipping it at the top end. But to me, it just adds a little bit more transient detail. So let's hear it without and then with, and then we'll dig into them just a little bit more. So it just makes everything just a little bit clearer having that on and it's really about those transients with the low punch it's about the low end transients with the detail and to an extent the dynamic perception it's about the the high end transients and the real attack of those parts of the audio so i just want to bring this dynamic perception all the way down and then bring it up because this is a really important knob to me in this module and let's hear exactly what it's doing Yeah, 
it's a super nice kind of transient detail knob. To me, if the mix is sounding a little bit flat because it's been too squashed at a stage before, I can either go back and unsquash it or that's going to retain the kind of weight of that squashiness, but it's going to allow me to get a little bit more transient detail in that dynamic perception knob. And it's super important to me on my mix bus. All right, thanks so much for checking it out. I love Slate Digital plugins. To me, I can mix an entire track using just their stuff and I often do. It's fantastic, it's got something for everything, but this is just how I use it in a mix bus scenario, master bus scenario, whatever you kind of want to call it. Um, when people send stuff to me for mastering, a large majority of the time I'm using maybe 75, 80% of Slate Digital stuff because I love it, it sounds fantastic. Are you using it on the mix bus? Are you using it just for mixing and you don't let it touch the master bus? Let me know in the comments below and I'll see you again soon. Thanks a lot, take care.